Hello and welcome to the program Hot Button. We all get into relationships to be happy, to smile, to laugh, and to keep good memories. But certainly not to cry, not to be constantly upset, and not to remain permanently unhappy. Those are the things that certain relationships bring to us. My name is Johnny, and I have with me on the program. In the crazy Chama. And Ofo Daniel Kitwate. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our topic today is overcoming abusive relationship. Hmm. Overcoming abusive relationship. Now, what does abusive relationship mean to you? Well, to me, abusive relationship means um, causing harm to your partner, either emotionally or physically or verbally. Hmm. Just um, cause stressing them, you know, with things that you know can weaken them, using their weak points against mm, them. Against them. Yeah. Okay. Let me hear from you, Shema. Thank you. From my own perspective, I think abusive relationship is using abusive power to take control in a relationship. Could be words spoken, action taking, violence mm. to address an issue to even communicate when like there are other ways you could pass a message calmly but you choose to be abusive, abusive. yeah so you use abusive power yeah. to take control of In your relationship. relationship yeah wow 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 now let's look at this again what what causes people to become abusive in a relationship why do I want to use abusive power in somebody? Why do I want to cause harm to you in a relationship? What brings about things like that? Well, um, for me, I can say experience. Mm. Um, for instance, a child that has witnessed his parents um, maybe arguing or fighting, or he has seen his father mm. hitting his mom, he can get registered to his mind. Mm. And when you train your mind to something, it can, um, it can just be a part of you. Mm, become a part of yeah, you. Yeah, unwillingly, okay. it can just be a part of you. Okay. So I believe experience can also be part of what makes people get abusive. Mm. So when you have experienced um, people being abusive to themselves as a growing child, it's something that you could live with, live with and then become a part of you. You begin to see it you, as a way of life. You could have been abused yourself. Yourself? Yes. Oh. I think that one, that has more effect. Okay. Yeah. For example, my dad hitting me all the time. Okay, all the time. Yeah. So um, you think the only way to correct to, people is yeah, by, by hitting them? Abu yeah. Wow. So which means parents must be very wary of this yeah. to know the extent of discipline they meet out to their to children. Their children mm -hmm. yes. Wow. Okay, let me hear from you, Chioma. What makes people abusive in a relationship? Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem? Yeah. Tell me about it. Okay, for a person who is in like constantly head, you know, like when they speak out, like they're trashed or like they're dismissed, like, okay, what's this one saying? So they enter a relationship and they feel the sense to be superior in that relationship. I mm. want to take charge of this relationship. And this person is a submissive woman or this person can be a submissive man as well. So let me take that for granted. Mm. And they begin to show the abusive mm. side of them, shouting, not being able to communicate with respect, talking to them anyhow. You must listen to what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, that's... So when you have one. low esteem, it could trigger you towards being abusive. Yes. Mm. Because in your mind, maybe you're not even up to the level. Yes. And then you just want to take charge. You want to dominate because yeah. you see yourself as, you know, kind of low. Mm -hmm. And I think on the other hand, too, there are people who can be abusive because of ego. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And then most times when you look at ego, it is low self-esteem that brings about ego. It does. Because naturally, 
if you're up there, you're up there. Do you understand? If you're、mm-hmm. up there, you're up there. But taking yourself from here to there could be as a result of low self esteem.、Mm-hmm. Now, what are the other things that can. I, I, I believe there are so many things that could trigger people being abusive. I, the kind of secondary school I went to,、okay. they don't allow teachers to hit students.、Mm, okay. If you hit a student, you, you might be queried for it.、Mm. Now, I believe the reason why they did that was because they don't want to teach children that hitting is the right way to correct、mm. someone.、Okay. There are other methods to use to teach a child that.、Mm. You do this, there are consequences, consequences.、Okay. for doing this. Now, I believe that lack of self control lack of self-control. Yeah, control. could also be a reason why people become abusive. Yeah, for example, if I have anger issues、mm. and I, ca- I can't control my emotions, yeah, and even for the slightest thing, you step on me, you must not even be my. Partner, mm. my friend,、mm. that relationship, you step on me and you don't say sorry. Can just You're triggered. Yeah, flare up and hit you,、mm. you know, shoulder or somewhere. So I believe that if you cannot control yourself, your emotions,、mm. you can't control the way you behave, you are, you are abusive. So lack of self control、yeah. could make you to be unnecessarily angry.、Yeah. And when you're angry, it could make you become abusive. abusive.、Yeah. Yes. Wow. Also, intoxication. If you're intoxicated, In- intoxication, wow, drug、okay. abuse, too、mm. much intake of alcohol, of alcohol.、Okay. Yeah, coming back home, you're not yourself, and maybe they want to talk to you and、mm. you're like very temperamental. You're like, no, you start to show off, you know, the next day you regret, but already you have done harm.、Mm. Yes. Okay, so if you keep、um, allowing substance into your system, system. Too much things that are not supposed to, edu- all these things that induce s people,、yes. if they begin to get into your system, somehow、yeah. it could make you abusive. Easy,、yeah. hmm. Wow. Now, when people are, there are people who may not be abusive instantly. There are people that you get into, nobody becomes abusive. From the first day of a relationship.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, as far as relationship is concerned, the beginning of every relationship is always very sweet. Very rosy. Okay? Of course. But as time、yes. goes on, and you know, one thing with time is it doesn't lie.、Yeah. With time, everything comes to bear.、Yes. Now, what are the little signs that can begin to tell us that this person is likely to be abusive,、mm. maybe later on in the future? Mm. What are those signs that we can see that somebody does and then you need to be careful about? Let me hear from you. I feel one of the signs is gaslighting. Gaslighting? Yes. Wow. I talk to you about something I do not like and you're belittling it. Why should、mm. you get angry about that? But that's how I see it. I have every right to get offended by something that. I, that doesn't sit、yeah. right with me. And communicating it to you as a partner, I'm trusting that you take that into consideration. So when you flare up on me, it's like. That's a sign. It's gaslighting. Wow. Yes. Gaslighting is a sign, and then everybody needs to watch out of course. for that. Let me hear from you.、Um, I believe、um, using abusive words all the time.、Mm, using abusive words. Yeah,、um, Someone, okay, for example, now, yeah,、um, I tell you something、yeah, that you don't like,、mm. and normally you are meant to have this approach, okay, rapport. Let's say we're friends, there's this kind of rapport that we should have, and all of a sudden I hear your father, this, that abusive words. I、mm. take it that this person can be abusive, okay, because. If we look at the definition we gave here,、okay. yeah, it could be either physical, verbally,、okay. also.、Mm. So when you use w- words on me that you are not meant to use, it, it was not demanded to use at that point. At that point? Yeah. I just feel like. It's a sign of someone、yeah. who、to、could、me. be.、Yeah. And you、Amazing. see, one thing about being abusive is it 
degenerates. Do you understand? Yes. Mm-hmm. It can move from one, one stage, stage to, to the, the other. Yeah. It could start with as little thing as just going silent. You know, silence could also be abusive. Yes. Do you understand? Silence. When you lock yourself up, and then the person is asking you things <coughs> you're not saying, mm. you're not communicating, what you're doing is you're abusing that person emotionally. emotionally yeah. Yes. Do you understand? You have gone blank. Some people call it lock up. <laughs> My partner is calling me for hours. I'm not picking. Sending texts, I'm not responding. And then I'm just quiet. Yeah. It's a sign. It's a sign of, of being abusive. You can look at that in two ways. Actually. Okay, let, let, let me hear it. That's why we're here. Yeah, if, if I'm not responding to your texts. Um, That's my way of expressing yeah. anger. Like, I'm expressing the anger at something you did. I'm not taking your call. I'm not responding to your messages. Personally, okay. I don't feel like that's abusive. Talk to, talk to I, us. I feel like uh, instead of, like you're just finding another means to let go of what you're feeling. Like, okay, mm. for example, like you did something to me that okay. I don't like. Mm. Yeah? And instead of me to use abusive words or you or mm. hit you, I just go calm myself. It's depending mm. if the person should come back to okay. discuss about what happened, you get. Mm. So or, people have their methods okay. of letting go of their anger. Mine can be just being in my corner. Mm. For example, if my mom, personally, if my mom makes me angry or does something that I don't like, yeah, I can just go to my room, mm. lock my door, stay there for like 30, to, 30 minutes to one hour. Okay. And then I come back out. I'm, I'm fine. That's your own way of... That's my own know, way of, of dealing letting with out whatever emotions you're feeling. Because she's my mom. I wouldn't want to say mm. something that I okay. shouldn't say. Okay. Yet. So I just keep it to myself, go and calm myself down. I don't know if a girl will understand it, but do you understand the point? Um, let me cut you okay. there. Yeah. Personally, if you want to take a space, I feel you should communicate with me. Okay. I need to take time off to cool because at the same time you're hurting me. I don't know what you're going to do in that space. Do you understand? So you need to communicate with me. Okay, I'm upset. I need to take some time off to the person that upset you. Yeah. Do you understand? But when you keep quiet, you go off. Me, I'm wondering. It's yeah. also costing me like damage Emotional as well. Trauma. Yes, yeah. because I'm thinking I really like you because we're in a relationship in the f- first place. So I need to know how to react. What are you doing? Because it might be something I said, and then if you take that space, you might do something extra. So if you communicate, you need your space. A respectful partner would respect your space yeah. and be like, okay, fine, take your space. But please, let's communicate. And not just communicate, comprehension yeah. as well. You can't yeah. communicate without both parties comprehending. Exactly. So yes. It can go both ways. Yeah, it can actually go both ways. Yeah. Some people, like he said, I just don't want trouble. <coughs> when, I, mm-hmm. when I'm angry and I speak, my voice becomes very loud. Yeah. And because I don't want to be seen as abusive, let me just keep quiet. I want to chip in something. Chip in? Yeah. Mm. So, um, from what you said, understandable, of course. Yeah. But I believe that if, if, you're, if you have a partner, yeah. And then you've been with that partner for a while. Yeah. You should understand your partner. Mm. You get. So I've been with you for like two months. Yeah. You know that, like, if I get angry, you should know when I'm angry. Okay. You understand. So if you see me somewhere, you should know that I'm just trying to. I do sign language. Yeah, I don't. But need if to, you speak, if you communicate me, it verbally, personally, uh, I wouldn't. To be honest, okay. yeah. I wouldn't have to spell everything out. For well, you. it's not easy, especially not when easy, you're angry. Of course. Mm-hmm. It's not easy to yeah. express yourself when you're angry. It's not easy to tell somebody, look, I'm angry now. Yeah. I want to just give rest. me space. Give me space. Yes. Do you understand? Because it's not that easy. Because if there are some there are some partners that when you approach them and you're like, uh, um, just give me space, they will be want to get on you and ask you some kind of questions that yeah. can just make you more angry so <laughs> okay I just, well like she said yeah. it swings both ways 
It does. Now, people who, there are people who go to the extent of, you call a thousand times, they're not picking. Some just put their phones off. Okay, let me get to that. Okay. In a relation, time changes. Okay. So you can be in a relationship for two months. I know how you act. Yeah. But maybe at that time, you're actually acting weirder than you act usually. Mm-hmm. It can be you are not more interested in relationships, so I can decide not to talk. Like, okay, I'm tired, and this is a way of com- like telling you the message of I am tired. So maybe before, even though I keep to my space, we still like say okay, like, we'll talk about it. Yeah. But when times change, you like feelings change as well. So the person is like, there's nothing to talk about. I'm just going to keep quiet. So like you can't really know what's going on in someone's mind. That's why you should communicate. Cause because yes, silence sometimes it kills. could be yeah. very, very abusive. Very. I'm, I'm saying this because it is something that I have done to someone mm. in ignorance. Yeah. And to me, I was just trying to keep my space. Put up my phone, don't talk to me. And then you call my friend, I'm like, this person wants to talk to me. I don't want to talk. Talk, mm. yeah. And then the person on the other side is going through this emotional trauma. trauma. Let me even know you're fine. Do you understand? Yeah. So it is another way of being abusive without even knowing it. Yeah. Now, let's look at this particular question. What should the victim of an abusive relationship do? Well, I feel it's depending on the abuse. Okay on the level of abuse? Not basically the level. Okay. If it's verbal or physical. Okay. If it's a verbal abuse, if I was being verbally abused, Okay. um, I would probably talk to someone else. Okay. Yes. I wouldn't talk with someone I know that... um, Okay, let me give let me give an example to Please explain do. my point yeah. well. I will probably talk to my parents or my sister. Okay. Yeah, my family. Because I wouldn't talk to someone outside my family. Okay. Especially if it's on the opposite sex. Okay. Because from there I can get, you know, um attached to someone else. Do you get? So I would talk to my family about it, for them to advise me, people who have, who have had experience with relationships, okay. to advise me on what I should do. Okay. Physically, I would first talk to my partner. Okay. Yeah. If I see no changes, then I can go to my family straight. Okay. And then if after all my efforts, I've tried and tried, and this person is still abusing me. Mm. My dear, <laughs> I'll pack my bag and I'll walk out the house. Oh, you pack your bag and yeah, you walk out? I'll leave. But first thing you said that struck me is you mm. must open up. I must someone. open up to someone. Because a lot of people take in abusive relationships. Yeah. They don't speak. Yeah. So first of all, I open you up. open up. And you, you have to speak to someone. Mind who you open up. Mind who you open up to. Yeah, it's very wow. important. Okay. And then if all things are put on the table, yeah. it doesn't work. I'm out. You're wrong. <laughs> okay, let me hear from you, Chioma. First off, some people don't even know they're in abusive relationships. Mm. Or they do and don't want to acknowledge it. So for me, you have to acknowledge that you're in an abusive relationship. You must recognize it. You must yeah. recognize okay. it. And evaluation. You have to make full evaluation on yourself as well because before coming into that relationship you had goals you had what you wanted to do you come into that relationship you compromise for your partner Mm. and so when you leave those goals you continue to accept those abusive things because okay i'm dependent on this person i really love this person Mm. so there's nothing i can really do or if you go to someone else you don't even know who to talk to because even your parents if what if you come from like a family that is abusive as well would you talk to your parents so you can also go to counselors Mm. therapists not everyone likes to share their problems but 
communicating with your partner as well evaluating yourself and reconnecting with your goals okay when you reconnect with those goals you know that you're worth it you're not supposed mm. to stay in that abusive relationship so you, get <laughs> you not even leave you have to make that person understand that i'm here because i care because i want you to change i've mm. given you times for you to change but you don't want to so this is not what i want for myself and if the person sees that okay you're standing up for yourself they begin to see okay in another light that mm. i'm actually not treating this person right mm. let me back off a bit from being abusive and make efforts okay so first it starts from you if you mm. cannot reconnect with yourself mm. if you cannot evaluate yourself then and if you cannot acknowledge it acknowledge so you must acknowledge the fact that you are in an abusive, abusive relationship. relationship yes evaluate yourself yes and then you also talk to a counselor yes or a therapist yes and most people don't involve god in their relationship mm. very and important god, to very very in, important yes i like the sound of that yeah you because should god involve god is our ultimate therapist of course who diagnoses us before we even come <laughs> with our problems yeah very important. There was something you said that um, I really like to emphasize on. When you are in an abusive relationship, yeah. some people, what the, what the, the advice that comes most times is, walk away, leave. But you yeah. said something about, I speak to my partner. Yeah. This is not what I want for myself. Before I came in here, I had yeah. my goals. But what I'm seeing here is not what I expected. Yeah. Yes. You know? So at that point, it's like breaking out of being a victim. Of course. Taking yeah. charge of your life. No abuser likes that to happen. No abuser wants to see a victim break free. Yes. Well, the moment you speak up like that, you're not just rescuing yourself, you're rescuing that abuser. Yes. Because then he knows he's not more in charge. So okay. his whole his or her ego is broken hmm. and you begin hmm. to rethink okay this is you you come back to your senses definitely because there's no point i was letting you do that hmm. and now i am standing up knowing this is not what i want for myself and you don't feel into that space so wow. you cannot be there that's nice yes so now we have seen there are people that could be abusive how can we help an abuser from being abusive? Because, yeah, you can help someone who is a victim, yeah. but there is also an abuser. There will be another victim. Yes. If there is no abuser, there will be no victim. How can oh. we help an abuser from being abusive? In a relationship, you're both intimate, so I feel you should talk about the past very important what are mm. past mistakes what is it that you feel you haven't really given up or you mm. feel like you're still dwelling upon talk to me about it we can mm. compromise okay. we can help each other out if it's a sense of feeling superior i would help you out mm. maybe you're a man i'm in a relationship i'm a female maybe your years of being a man nobody really took you as one so coming mm. here you want to feel superior. feel superior talk to me and i'll make you feel superior. superior i would give you i would come and seek your knowledge on things because i respect mm. you in that relationship so it's very important to speak about your past mm. so yes you, you first and foremost you speak about it yes. you have that intimate conversation with the person of course tell me you want to feel important, I'm here For you. to make you, you do you feel understand? that way, yes. You could speak that way and then just give the person the confidence that yes. the person wants to see. You don't have to yes. take it. Yes. I am giving it. So when you have a conversation with that kind of person, in a way you're helping the yeah, person. Of course. And I'm sure there are other steps to it. Let me hear from you, Daniel. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, because most times people don't pay attention to the abuser. They just want the victims to be rescued. But the abuser is still there and then there will always be victims yes. when an abuser is there. Well, um, what she said was very correct. Okay. Um, 
another point for me. <laughs> Funny one though. Okay. But I think an abuser can learn from his mistakes. Mm. His or her mistakes. Okay. Yeah. A scenario where um maybe your partner didn't like um have that intimate talk with you mm. and then your partner just picked up his bag and left after and then you, after the partner has gone uh -huh. you start to see that the person had value to you mm. right and then maybe after trying to reach there's no way to reconnect you now meet someone new mm. yet i'm sure you wouldn't want to keep lose. losing people yes so you would have to give that effort to mm. to learn from your own mistakes. yeah from your own mistakes you have okay. to learn talk maybe visit a therapist mm. talk about it let your emotions out like she said most people don't feel comfortable talking with mm. their family so you can talk with a stranger okay that doesn't even know where you're from mm. then talk about it. you learn from what had happened mm. and then i think that that will help to improve yeah. it's not nobody said it's going to be an easy one mm. but then you just have to try putting that effort keep okay. trying okay yeah. you know people need to begin to pay attention to abusers yeah. it is not enough to rescue someone from an abusive relationship there is an abuser he would always find his victim we can pray for these people we can recommend we can talk to their families mm. even without them knowing this person is abusive. I don't know what is triggering him. I don't know what makes him like this, but I think he needs help. You don't necessarily have to be in a relationship, but you stand by the person mm -hmm. to make sure that the person is brought in the right, you know, um, uh, frame of mind yeah. to stop being abusive. And you garnish that with a lot of prayer, counseling, and motivation to the abuser. With that, we're changing the entire society for yeah. our own common good. Mm. Thank you for being a part of the program today. Thank mm. you. Very insightful, mm. all your opinions. Thank you. You have taught somebody's life out there today. Yeah. All right, dear viewer, that's where we have it today. Thank you for being a part of the program. If you're in an abusive relationship, if you're a victim, please find a way to address that particular thing. Do not be silent about it. Speak up and get help. If you are an abuser, you're not doing the right thing. Find a way to reevaluate your life and take the right steps. You cannot do it on your own. You can only do it when you involve God in your relationship. Thank you for joining us today. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.